Today we're talking affordable anti-aging skincare. Skincare can be extremely expensive, but there are some really great, inexpensive, budget-friendly skincare products on the market now. I use a mix of more expensive and less expensive products in my own skincare routine, and I've been asked by you if I could provide some more affordable or drugstore product options for the more expensive products that I use. Now the term affordable is gonna be different for everyone, but I don't think that it's necessary to spend $100 for a face serum or an eye cream when there's a lot of good affordable options out there. Now there are tons of options out there at the drugstore and online. It can be overwhelming. So the options that I'm going to talk about today are ones that I have my own personal experience with or that I know are worth looking into. Now I'm not a skincare expert. I'm not claiming to be a skincare expert. I'm not a dermatologist. I'm not an esthetician. I just have years of experience of researching and dealing with my own skin issues and I wanted to share that with you today and I am going to give you a brief summary of some of the ingredients that are in these products so that you might understand a little bit better which ones you want to use which ones you might not want to use yet and that kind of thing and if you're not subscribed to my channel yet go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can view my videos on a regular basis and if you like this video give it a thumbs up so if you're interested in hearing some suggestions for more affordable anti-aging skincare products Products, just keep watching. Now I know cleansing the skin is not necessarily an anti-aging thing. We do that even when we're young, but as we get older, our needs change. And now that I'm over 40 and probably even when I was in my late thirties, I found that even though I'm still combination oily, I don't want to strip my skin. So I tend to want to use a gentler cleanser. Some that I suggest that I really like that are less expensive, Olay Foaming Facial Wash for Sensitive Skin is a really great cleanser. It doesn't strip the skin or leave a film. Those are things that I tend to look for. Another one that I like um, that has a very similar description is by Clean and Clear. Purpose makes one as well. I think those are really great cleansers. Another one that may surprise you is the Dove Sensitive Skin Facial Bar. And they have just their regular white bar that a lot of people like. I've used this for a long time off and on. I was surprised that a facial bar did not strip my skin, but it really doesn't. Now, if you need something to remove your makeup at night, a lot of people use the Garnier or L'Oreal Micellar Waters. They find those really great. There is a controversial cancer causing ingredient in those. So I have removed those from my skincare arsenal. This simple dual effect eye makeup remover, I find this and a double cleansing with either one of those cleansers to work really, really well. Another product that I sometimes use um, is the Neutrogena facial wipes in the blue package. I'm out of those right now because I use those and they're great for travel. So those are my recommendations for cleansers. It's a little harder to find a good quality serum at a lesser price point. Serums sink deep within the skin layers to penetrate the skin and deliver nutrients that help repair the skin. They're lightweight, super hydrating, and they tend to not clog pores. Some have peptides that help build collagen, which helps the aging process, and others have vitamin C, which helps fight free radical damage and helps brighten the skin tone as well. Timeless is a brand that has a couple of great serums. Their Matrixel 3000 is supposed to be excellent excellent for anti-aging. There's a couple of other brands that have a great Matrixel 3000 serum, but I hear about Timeless a lot. They also have a Synth 6 serum that's really great too. Now I came across this serum from number seven called Protect and Perfect Intense Advanced Serum. This not only has Matrixel 3000 in it, but it also has hyaluronic acid. This is a great drugstore serum. It worked really well on my skin. Now hyaluronic acid is something that you hear about a lot, especially these days. It seems to be in a lot of skincare ingredients. It's actually a natural component of the skin tissue, which we of course lose as we age. Synthetic variations of hyaluronic acid are put into skincare ingredients to help boost the skin's moisture content and to soothe the skin. It's capable of holding up to a thousand times its weight in water, which makes it an optimal hydrator for basically every skin type. 
You can have hyaluronic acid in a product. It will not make your skin greasy, but it will hydrate the skin. So I was excited to come across this serum. This would be a great serum to pick up. You can apply a serum in the morning and in the evening. Since I just mentioned hyaluronic acid, I'm also gonna talk about niacinamide since that's another hot ingredient that's in a lot of our skincare products now. You may know it's good for you, but not really know what it does. It's vitamin B3. It visibly improves the appearance of enlarged pores. It evens our skin tone. It improves fine lines, dullness, and a weakened skin surface. I wanted you to know about those ingredients because I'm talking about moisturizers next and some of them contain those. Currently in my own skincare routine, I'm using the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream. It's got hyaluronic acid in it. It feels wonderful, almost cooling on the skin. And it says it's for extra dry skin, but I don't have extra dry skin. I have combination oily skin and it works beautifully for me. So I do think that this will work for all skin types. It hydrates my skin all day without making me greasy and it just sits beautifully on my skin. What I was using prior to the Neutrogena is the Garnier Ultra Lift Miracle Wake Up Cream. I also think this is a fantastic daytime moisturizer. It also has a very similar gel cream consistency. I think if you have oily combination skin, using a gel type moisturizer during the day is key. If you have dry skin, I think this one would work really well for you. If you have oilier skin, this is probably one that you would wanna use but both of these are really great moisturizers and would work for any type of skin, whether you're aging or not. Both of these provide all day hydration. They seem to plump up my fine lines in the morning and give me all day hydration without stripping the skin as the day goes on. And they just make my skin feel good and the makeup apply very evenly over it. Now, if you're looking for a more basic moisturizer, maybe you have drier skin and you want a more cream-like consistency to your moisturizer. This is one that has stayed in my skincare arsenal for years. I have two of these bottles in my house and they stay in my house because it's such an effective product. Um, it's the Vanna Cream Light Lotion for Sensitive Skin. This is about as basic as you can get. It's free of basically everything. It's free of dyes, lanolin, fragrance, parabens, gluten. It's great for the entire family, for all over your body, face, hands, body. I can apply this on my face, on my hands, anywhere. The ingredient list is very simple and it works. It's recommended by dermatologists for a reason. And I always recommend this to people when they say they're looking for a very basic, very inexpensive moisturizer for daytime or nighttime. So that was daytime segueing into nighttime. For nighttime, I would also use the Vanna Cream. For nighttime, I would also use this Neutrogena for a more basic, just a hyaluronic acid moisturizing type product. But if I wanted something with more of a treatment to it, I swear by what everyone else seems to swear by, and that is the Olay Regenerist Micro Sculpting Cream. I used this years ago and kind of forgot about it because I've been using other things, and I went back to it several weeks ago. It's wonderful. It really does seem to even out my skin tone. It just does great things for my skin, and I don't wake up super greasy with it. It's just a white cream. This one has a scent to it, but they do have one that's unscented as well, but I don't find the scent to this to be too overpowering. This has a little bit of everything, I feel like. It has niacinamide, it has hyaluronic acid, it has some peptides. It's just a good all-around anti-aging cream. I kind of slather it everywhere, my chest, my neck, my face. I wake up and I feel like my skin just looks better. If you've been following my channel, you know I'm a big believer in using a facial oil, a beauty oil in your routine to help keep your skin balanced. Whether you have oily or dry skin, it really doesn't matter. It just helps a great deal. I personally only do it at night. That's enough for me to keep my skin more balanced in terms of oil production and to keep any dry patches or dehydrated skin under control. Timeless makes some great oils that are affordably priced and The Ordinary does as well. I have one here by Teddy Organics. I got this from Amazon. It will be linked below. I also have Squalane oil from The Ordinary. Um, the Teddy Organics was rosehip oil. I didn't mention that. 
I personally like marula, maracuja oil, rosehip oil. I use squalane under my moisturizer at night. I just pat a drop or two in and then I mix whatever other oil I'm using in with my moisturizer two to three drops, or I pat it in over my moisturizer. But I definitely think putting an oil into your routine is a good thing to do if you are having some issues with your skin being regulated. This would not be an anti-aging video if I didn't mention retinol. Retinol helps build collagen, help with cell turnover, and just helps with anti-aging in general. It's probably one of the major anti-aging products that people think about. It does help smooth skin, firm skin, all those good things. Now, people usually think about Retin-A, prescription products, things like Refisa, Renova. Does Renova still exist? I'm not sure. There's now Differin Gel that's over the counter, and I'm not sure if it has as much in terms of anti-aging as it does with adult acne but it is over the counter now. Now any non-prescription product is not gonna be nearly as strong as a prescription product, but it's better than not using a retinol product at all. Incorporating it in some form or fashion is gonna be better than not doing anything. CeraVe has a time-released product. I'll link it below that is supposed to be really good and very gentle on the skin. Polish Choice has some really good retinol serums and boosters that range between $35 and $45 when they're on sale, and she does run some sales pretty frequently. The Ordinary has a retinol product that seems to be pretty popular as well. Olay Pro X Anti-Aging Firming Cream was actually in the British Journal of Dermatology, and a study in there said that it was actually as effective in treating anti-aging as Renova, which is prescription. So that might be a product you would want to look into as well. A lot of retinol products that have a higher concentration, unfortunately, are a little bit more expensive. So there may come a time when you do need to bump up your retinol concentration, and that may cost a little more money, but if you can use a less expensive product for a while, I would definitely recommend doing that. Now we have our acids. You have glycolic acid, you have lactic acid. Both of them are AHAs. Both of them exfoliate the skin and help with skin cell turnover, and they help soften the signs of aging. Glycolic acid is particularly effective with sun damage, and it's one of the most effective and well-researched forms of AHAs. Because of its small molecular size, it can penetrate the skin really easily. The glycolic acid that I like from the drugstore, actually I think it's just from Target, is Pixie Glow Tonic. They have it in pad form, which is great for travel, and they have just the regular tonic. I swipe this on after I cleanse my face and before I put anything else on my face. It just works really well for me and it does not bother my sensitive skin with rosacea whatsoever. I think this is a great product, especially if you do have sensitive skin. Polish Choice also makes some really great AHA glycolic products that are in the $30 range. I don't think that's too terribly expensive, especially considering the cost of most glycolic acid products out there. Lactic acid helps brighten the skin tone and it has some hydrating properties as well. It's good for dry or sensitive skin because it is a little bit more moisturizing and a little less irritating. Even though there are some great glycolic acid products that are not irritating and not drying. It's a little bit harder to find a less expensive lactic acid product. You hear about Sunday Riley Good Jeans, people use it, they pay for it, there's a reason for that. The Ordinary does have a lactic acid product, which I have around here somewhere. So here's their lactic acid product. If you saw my Ordinary review, you know this did not agree with my skin at all. Some people love it, and they have a couple different strengths of this. It just did not work out for me, but a lot of people do really like this product. There's also another lactic acid product by Silk Naturals, a 5% toner that is pretty popular and seems to work out for people. So if you're looking for a less expensive option, you may wanna look at one of those brands. If you know of a less expensive lactic acid option, I'm having a problem saying that, <laughs> please let me know, let us know down in the description box because I know people are looking for one, but I'm just not sure what else is out there. The very last thing I'm gonna to touch on is eye cream. 
When you look at eye creams at the drugstore that have any significant anti-aging properties, they range typically around $30 or $40, yes, at the drugstore. All the other ones are pretty basic. There may be some in the $20 something dollar range, and most of them are around 0.5 ounces. So when I was looking at those, let's take Olay for example. They had some that were $32 and some that were $42. I came home and I looked at my Kiehl's Creamy Eye Treatment with Avocado that I had been using forever and realized that it's $29 for 0.5 ounces. It seems like it would be expensive because it's not from the drugstore. It's from a department store and from Sephora, but it really works. It wears really well under makeup. There's also Mario Badescu Hyaluronic Eye Cream and this is a great product and it is $18. <laughs> so the drugstore is not always a great option for everything. There are some less expensive products out there and they're not necessarily at the drugstore, but they're not that expensive. I just wanted to point that out because eye cream was a specific product where I found that to be the case. Let's talk about just a really quick sample routine. We talked about the ingredients, we talked about various products. And let's just talk about a sample, somewhat simplified routine because once you get older, the layering can get kind of out of hand because you're really trying to prevent wrinkles. You're trying to prevent some flare ups. If you have a skin condition, there's just all kinds of things you're trying to do when you start to get a little bit older. So in the morning, you wake up, you cleanse your skin, you put your serum on, and then you put on your moisturizer and SPF or your combination product if you use one and you put your eye cream on, you put your lip balm on, and you're done. In the evening, you remove your makeup, cleanse your skin, put your serum on, put your retinol treatment on, whatever that may be that you're using. We just went over a lot of options. And put your night cream on, whatever moisturizing night treatment that you're using, and your oil, and then your eye cream and your lip balm. And that's it, you're done. That was a lot of information in one video. I hope that you found it beneficial. I hope this video was not 45 minutes long. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you're not following me on social media, I'll put that on the screen and down below. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.